hey everybody, so this is something you don't normally see bloggers telling you. Here's three products that just simply can't be used for deep space object photography. I tried quite a bit and the results were just ooh, awful. And uh, I thought I would share that these products don't work just in case you might have come across them and thought, hmm, is this going to work? It doesn't, they don't. Sit back, relax, and let me see if I can save you some time and money. One of the things is the Nikon A1000. It's great for lunar, it's good for like use during the day, don't point it at the sun, but otherwise it really doesn't kick out a very good image. Um, I may at some point try this on planetary for like Jupiter or Venus, but overall I found that it's just the quality wasn't there and there's enough sort of anti-noise reduction, etc., in the camera that it tends to just eat the image and garble it. It's, I tried a couple nights and uh, if it's able to do something, I wasn't able to figure it out. It does have some features that are designed for astrophotography, but those are things like star trails and stuff like that. So yeah, if you're trying to do DSO with this, this doesn't work. The other thing I was using was the GoPro. Now this is great for time lapses, especially like night to day or day to night, or like if the moon's up and you have like a nice view of the ground, it will sort of get something. However, I did try this on top of my telescope and basically it tracks along the sky and I've tried to stack that, but again, the quality was not particularly great. It's fine for like if you're doing a video, but if you're like, hey, I wanna actually stack these images and get something out of it. Again, it got very dicey and I don't know what the internal processing on this was, but I felt like a lot of that fine detail was sort of tossed away. So just something to keep in mind um, so you don't waste a couple nights trying to make it work. And there are obviously better options out there, but it's one of those things where if you're like, hey, I have this, let's give it a try. These don't tend to work terribly great. So the third thing that didn't work was the IR chrome filter. Now this is designed for during the day, full spectrum camera. It really creates a cool effect. However, I thought, why not give it a try for astrophotography and see what I got. And uh, yeah, it uh, creates a really bluishy tinged image. And in the infrared spectrum, you don't get a lot of red. It's, I tested it with a hydrogen alpha filter. You just couldn't see anything through it. And uh, basically, yeah, it works great for its original application. However, for using it for astrophotography, it's just, it's a no-go. So I'll have to see if I can find a different filter. I was kind of hoping maybe it was like dual band filter or something like that that just happened to line up, but it's not. And uh, yeah, it just creates a really bluish tinged image with really out of spec red highlights because the lenses are not focusing that all together. Yeah, I'm gonna have to figure out a new uh, light pollution filter so that I can image closer to the horizon because um, Kingston is definitely getting brighter and Napanee is definitely getting a little bit brighter. And yeah, um, it's dark skies out here, but uh, light pollution is making those dark skies disappear a little bit every year. So it's something to keep in mind. Those are three things I tried over the last month. And uh, that's why my videos have sort of been a little bit more erratic than I'd hoped because um, Watch me make this great video and then end up with garbagey photos. Thumbs up if I somehow managed to save you some time or money by not buying something. Probably a little bit oddball things to try to do, but there you go. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.